Okay, um, I think we may just start there then. So hello everyone and welcome to today's morning stream. Uh, my name is Jamie and uh, I am studying PhD on the NEFCDT and with everyone else that's presented today and yesterday. Uh, today we're going to be talking about low carbon energy. So uh, we'll talk, before we talk about low carbon energy, my slideshow will work, which it isn't. Which isn't great. There we go. So before we talk about low carbon energy, we'll talk about where do we use energy in the home. Now, usually when we talk about energy, we think about electricity. So our phones, lights, toasters, washing machines, computers. But you've also got to think about things like gas. So if you have a gas oven or a gas boiler or gas hobs, that's using energy when you when you use them. It's it's burning gas to to to, to heat water or food or whatever it is it's, that is being heated. You also have to consider things like your cars, which burn petrol usually. Obviously, sometimes it's uh, it's a, it's their electric cars. Um, but yeah, that that is another form of of energy that we use in the home or in our everyday lives. So. All of this energy that we use, more or less everything we do in, in modern life, we, we use energy to do. So where does, where does the energy come from? Now, at the moment, when it loads, most of our energy comes from fossil fuels. Now, fossil fuels are coal, gas, and oil. Those are the three fossil fuels that we use. Now, um, the burning of fossil fuels uh, or fossil fuels come from deep within the earth. They are the petrified remains of dinosaurs and all sorts of other uh, animals and plants from, from long ago. Uh, companies then extract those oils, gases, and coal, and they then um, burn them. And much like a barbecue, you, you burn the oil, the gas, or the coal, which heats up and it heats up water, and it turns a turbine. However, when you burn, the fossil fuels, you release a, a chemical called CO2. Now, normally CO2 is not that dangerous a chemical. In fact, we breathe it out. We breathe in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. However, when it's released in the levels that it is with the burning of fossil fuels, it can be quite bad. Uh, it's one of what are called the greenhouse gases, which are gases which are released into the atmosphere and they form almost like a protective blanket, not a protective blanket, that's the wrong word, but a, a blanket over the, over the earth. So when the sun's energy comes in, the, the, the heat from the sun comes in, it hits the earth and it bounces back up. It hits this layer of greenhouse gases. And rather than just going straight back out into space, it gets trapped on the earth. And this leads to global warming because the earth is getting warmer and the global warming leads to climate change. Now, as I'm sure you're all aware, climate change is, is, is one of the major problems that we're fa facing in the world today. Uh, you know, the, the increased heat has led to the melting of the ice caps, which has led to rising sea levels, which has led to flooding. It's also been linked to uh, a number of wildfires that have been, uh, the number of wildfires which have increased around the world in the past uh, number of years. It's also making habitats um, which have existed for thousands of years. Um, it's making them disappear. So animals like penguins and polar bears, but even, um, you know, sort of less cold, if you will, species, um, they are, are unable to survive in the way that they, they have been before. So how do we combat this? Well, the answer lies in low carbon energy production. Now, there are a number of ways to do this, but simply put, low carbon energy is producing energy without mass release of carbon dioxide, the CO2 that we talked about earlier. Um, and generally, they fall into, there are generally a few separate solutions, which we'll go through now. So first of all, you have wind power. Now I'm sure you've all seen a wind turbine that all over the country, um, basically wind turbines, they, the, as you can see in our little gift at the bottom left, they, the, the turbine blades spin, which powers something called a dynamo, which can convert movement energy into electricity energy, which can then be taken all the way back to uh, our, our homes and power our computers and our phones and our lights and our toasters. The 
while wind power is uh, a, a very viable way of producing energy, it does take up a lot of room. As you can see in the middle photo there, they have to be quite spread out. And um, the power that they produce isn't as, as much as some other more conventional power production methods. So another option is solar power, when that loads, which it will. Now, solar power is, uh, again, I'm sure you'll have seen it, they're big panels. So you, some people have them on the roofs of their houses, but also you may see them uh, as in big fields. You'll see loads of them in a big field. Now, what solar power does is it takes the energy from the sun, the, the heat and the light from the sun, and it captures it, and it turns it into electrical energy. The problem, solar power is, is fan fantastic. Obviously, the sun is always there. The sun will always rise and the sun will always come back. It will always shine. Sometimes clouds can get in the way and can slow it down, but the sun will always be there. Even in the winter, the sun's there. Wind power does struggle because sometimes there isn't any wind. And also, if it's very, very windy, you, you have to turn the, 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 the wind turbines off because they can get damaged. However, there is a time where there is no solar power, and that's at night. You can't collect solar power at night, which means you have to store the power, which is a, a, another problem which uh, scientists are dealing with at the moment. Um, so wind and solar power are both very reliant on things which come and go. The wind blows and sometimes the wind doesn't, the sun's out and sometimes it isn't. So what other options are there? Well, there is hydropower. Now, I'm sure you've all, all seen photos of dams. They are very impressive structures, huge things. And what they do is they cause a buildup of water behind them. You, you, you put them in front of, of a river, which normally flows at a much lower level, and the water builds up very high. And as you can see in our little, uh, little gif on the bottom left, the water flows down through the dam and spins a turbine, which produces electricity. It then lets the water out of the bottom and the water carries on as normal. Um, this is a very reliable form of energy production. Um, it produces a lot of energy. It is very difficult to build, and obviously you have to make sure that the dams are very, very strong, because if the, uh, the water escapes, then you'll have a lot of water all of a sudden flowing down uh, a river, which isn't supposed to have that much water in it. It can do a lot of damage. But it is a, a very reliable source of energy. So the other option is uh, when it loads, biomass power. Now biomass power is not as green in terms of not releasing carbon dioxide as some of the other um, some of the, some of the other uh, uh, low carbon solutions, as it involves burning of uh, wood or plant matter or even sometimes rubbish. They they can burn you know, waste and refuse, and using the heat, they, they, they can produce energy from it. Um, obviously, this isn't great. Burning rubbish isn't a particularly uh, nice thing to do, and it does release some carbon dioxide as well as other greenhouse gases. However, if it is managed properly, the carbon which is absorbed by trees, um, because trees absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen, they do the opposite of what people do and animals do um, if it's managed properly the carbon can be considered what's called carbon neutral which means that the carbon absorbed by the tree is equal to the amount of carbon released by the tree when it's burnt so if you manage biomass power properly it can be carbon neutral but that is a very big project because trees as i'm sure you're aware take a very very long time to grow there is one more option, which is that of nuclear power. Now, nuclear power is not renewable, unlike all of these other uh, um, uh, solutions, potential solutions. Um, all of the other solutions, although they may come and go throughout the day or throughout the month, throughout the year, there will always be wind, there will always be sun, we'll be able to grow more trees, and there will always be water. Nuclear power isn't renewable um, in the same sense, However, it is not quite like fossil fuels. I'm sure you've all, you're all aware fossil fuels are non-renewable, which means we're running out. We're running out of coal, we're running out of oil, and we're running out of gas, which means before long, we won't be able to power things using 
uh, coal, oil and gas and the fossil fuels. We'll have to use another method. Now, nuclear power uses something called uranium. Now, there is a limited amount of uranium on Earth. However, you use such a tiny amount of uranium to produce such a huge amount of power that it, it can be considered sort of almost renewable because it's so far in the future that we would run out of uranium that it's not really a problem that we need to worry about right now. There are other potential problems with, with, with nuclear power. Um, sometimes uh, there is a, uh, because of the way it works, there is radiation which is released. However, modern nuclear power plants are very, very safe. Um, there have been accidents before, but they were in the past and we've learned from them and they're very, very safe. And so the, the uranium is put inside and it undergoes a pr process called fission, which you don't need to understand, it's a very complicated process, um, which releases a lot of energy. And then much like fossil fuels, that's used to then heat water, which then spins a turbine and produces energy using the dynamo that we discussed earlier. So those are the, 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 the options that we have to produce power in, uh, in, in, at the moment, aside from fossil fuels. And um, all of them have their positives and their negatives. All of them have advantages and disadvantages. But how do they compare to each other? So on the next slide, we'll look, how long would a TV work if it was attached to a nuclear power plant or if it was attached to a wind turbine? So this is a good way of saying of comparing the the how effective or how uh, yeah how effective the, the these different uh, power supply methods are at producing energy and how much energy they produce. So if you just want to have to think about that, and um, you know which one do you think produces more energy um, in a certain amount of time in a day? It's the nuclear power plant or the wind turbine. The right answer is a nuclear power plant. A nuclear power plant produces almost 300 times the energy of a wind turbine meaning that if your TV was plugged into a nuclear power plant, you could watch 300 times more TV than you could if it was plugged into a wind turbine. That's, that's a lot of episodes of Friends. However, there, uh, one nuclear power plant would take up a lot more space than one wind turbine. So how about if we compare a hydropower plant to a wind turbine? Which one do you think there would produce more power? I'll let you think about it for a minute. So it's a hydropower plant. Uh, it's still not the wind turbine. A hydropower plant produces about 10 times more energy than a wind turbine. Um, and again, hydropower plants are bigger as a single unit than a single wind turbine. But then you do need a lot of space to put lots of wind turbines down. So let's try another one. Now let's think about computers. So how long do you think your computer would work if it was attached to a biomass plant or attached to one solar panel. Um, we will assume that the sun is shining on the solar panel the whole time. Don't worry about the fact that it will be turned off at night. So let's have a look. It's the biomass plant by quite a lot. So the, the biomass plant produces almost 6,000 
times more power than a single solar panel. That's it's a lot more power. However, again, if we're looking at the space, uh, a biomass, not only do you need the size of the plant, you also need the space to grow all of the trees. Although that could be nice space, so you may not have to want to count that. Um, and solar panels, you can put them almost anywhere. You can put them on roofs, you can put them in fields, you can put them in deserts, you can put them on skyscrapers. Um, so both, as we as we mentioned before, both have their advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so the next one, we're still looking at computers, but now we can compare the biomass plant to the nuclear power plant. So which one of those two do you think produces more power? Okay, so let's see. It's the nuclear power plant. The nuclear power plant is one of the most powerful, that's the right word, it produces a, a huge amount of energy more than almost any other uh, type of power plant in the world. It, it really does produce a huge amount of energy. Um, however, they are very expensive to build and they have to be made sure that they're very, very safe because they, you know, they, they, they can be dangerous if they're not managed properly, which they are. So now let's look at a light bulb. So if you're running a light bulb and uh, you have it attached to a wind turbine and a solar panel, which one do you think will last longer? Okay, so let's see. It's the wind turbine by, by quite a long way, about 600 times more power for one wind turbine to one solar panel. So a lot more power. So last but not least, if we had a light attached to a biomass plant and a light attached to a hydropower plant, which one do you think produces more energy? Give you a little bit of time to think about that. Okie dokie. They're actually about the same. Uh, biomass plants and hydropower plants produce broadly the same amount of energy. Um, you can have, uh, they, they do vary based on their size. Obviously, some hydropower dams are much bigger than others, but generally, a hydropower plant and a biomass plant will produce about the same amount of energy. Okay, I think that's the end of the talk. It is. So, if there are any questions, can you put them in the chat now? and I will uh, do my best to answer them. Thank you very much for listening.